Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this video, we are going to talking about the audio metric test. This is the part 2 video. The part 1 video has been already uploaded on my YouTube channel. So let's start with the audio metric test. First is the pure tone audio metric. It is a subjective test. It is the electronic device produced the pure tone intensity of which can be increased or decreased in the 5 decibel steps. The AC threshold measured for the tones of the 125, 250, 500, 1000 to 1000, 4000, 8000. The BC threshold measured for the tones of 500, 1K, 2K and 4K. Amount of intensity increase more than the normal measures the degree of the hearing impairment at that frequency. It is charted on the audiogram. The masking is essential for all BC tests employing the narrow band noise to non-test ear. When the difference between the two ears more than or equal to 40 decibel in the AC threshold, the better ear is masked to avoid getting a shadow curve from the non-test better ear. Uh, it is used to determine the degree and type of hearing loss and to determine the affected frequency. The normal range of the hearing is minus 10 to 25 decibel. According to American Speech and the Hearing Association, the grading of the hearing loss are Minus 10 to 25 decibel normal, 26 to 40 decibel mild, 41 to 55 is moderate, 51 to 70 moderately severe, 71 to 90 is severe and more than 91 is the profound hearing loss. More than the 70 decibel hearing loss is indication for the cochlear implant. More than the 15 decibel hearing loss is the conductive These are the symbol shifts for the normal audiogram for the right and left ear. And this is the normal audiogram AC and BC up to the 25 decibel. Now the speech audiometry. This is used for the rehabilitation. Two parameter studies in this. First is the speech reception threshold. Minimum intensity at which the 50% of sound are repeated correctly by patient. 30 decibel plus minus 10 decibel. Pure tone audiometry thresholds. Second is the speech discriminative score also known as the speech recognition or the word recognition score patient ability to understand the speech poor in the neural deafness the rollover phenomenon the retrocochlear hearing loss on increasing the sound above the threshold in the retrocochlear hearing loss the pb word decrease and it is indicative never fitting neural deafness Next is the impedance audiometry. It is the objective test for the stepedial or the acoustic reflex measurement and the tympanometry. First is the tympanometry. The principle is when a sound strikes the tympanic membranes, some sound energy is absorbed while the rest are reflected. The stiffer tympanic membrane reflects the more sound. It is used to measure the middle ear disease with the normal tympanic membrane. The procedure is a probe passed through the EAC, the three channel in the probe ABC, A for the passes sound across the middle ear, B for the changing pressure of the EAC to see the movement of the tympanic membrane, C for the picked up the reflective sounds. It is more, most rapid test for the eustachian tube function. It is measured the compliance uh, which is the ease of the mobility of the tympanic membrane decrease the resistance more the compliance. The middle ear pressure normal to minus 100 millimeter. The maze Middle ear pressure normal with the decreased movement of the tympanic membranes in the normal eustachian tube or ossicular fixation. The middle ear pressure negative with the low movement of the tympanic membrane is the ET block and fluid in the middle ear. Now the types of the tympanogram. A is the normal and AS is lower compliance and the normal middle ear pressure. It is in the autosclerosis. AD is increased compliance and the normal middle ear pressure which is in the ossicular discontinuity and B is the flat and the dome shaped which is in the lower compliance and the negative middle ear pressure, secretory auditized media and the TM perforation. C is the maximum compliance and the negative ear middle ear pressure, ET obstruction or the early age stage of the otitis media diffusion. Now the acoustic reflex. The principle is the loud sound 70 to 1000 decibel above the threshold of the hearing causes the bilateral contraction of the stepedial muscle that is the sensory or the cochlear hearing loss and the threshold is decreases. Neural or the retrocochlear hearing loss the decays stepedial reflex. It is absent in the ossicular discontinuity, ossicular fixation, serous otitis media and the CHL. It is used to test the hearing in the infants and the young child to find the malingiers and uh, to detect the cochlear pathology to detect the eight nerve lesion facial nerve lesion and the brain stem lesion the types of the tympanogram other for the uh, eustachian tube function are the valsala manual where the air blow into the mouth and exhale with the closed nostril normal pop popping of the eardrum upper now the special test for the hearings to differentiate the sensory and the neural hearing loss. 
First is the short increment sensitivity index CC test. Increment of the one decibel increase can be appreciated in the recruitment. If the 70 to 100 percent of the one decibel increase increment is identified, that is abnormal in the cochlear deafness and the meniere's disease. 0 to 20 percent of the one decibel is increase identified is the nerve deafness. Now the evoked response audiometry. It is the objective test. In this, the electrical activity in the auditory pathway in response to auditory stimuli is heard. And the first is the electrocochleography in COG. Invasive test measure electrical potential arising in the cochlea. Normal summation potential accent potential ratio is the more less than the 30 percent. If it is more than 45 percent in the cochlear disorder, Meniere's disease, the cochlear test disorder's best test. The procedure is the thin needle passing through the TM placed at the promontory. Then a click sound given and response from the organ of Curti recorded in the form of the waves. And first we will record the activity of the outer hair cells. And then second, we will record the sub of the outer hair cells and the inner hair cell potential second and the action potential in the nerve third. Now the BERA brainstem evoke response audiometry. It is the objective test, non-invasive and best for the investigation to differentiate the retrocochlear and the cochlear hearing loss. To diagnose in the infants, screening for the neonates, find the malignant non-organic hearing loss. Now the procedure is a sound given from the EAC by a probe, response recorded in the form of the graph by electrode produced by each part of the auditory pathway. Each anatomical site of the neural pathway generate for the various waves. Wave first is the distal part of the cochlea, wave second is the proximal part of cochlea, wave third is the cochlear nuclei, wave fourth superior olivary nucleus, fifth lateral amnesia which is the largest and most prominent wave and sixth is the inferior colliculus. Third is two and third to fifth is two and one to fifth is four millisecond. The time at which the EAC wave appears, it is the latency which is late in the inner ear effect and increasing the acoustic neuroma between the one to fifth. Auto acoustic emission. OAE, low intensity sounds produced by the outer hair cells can be elicited by a very sensitive microphone placed in the external ear canal and recorded. OAE plays present in the normal hair cells and uh, in the 8 nerve pa pathway as cochlear and the hair cells are normal. The types are first is spontaneous OAE and second is the evoked OAE which is the transient evoked done by the click sound for the whole organ of cortai used for the screening test in the neonates. The distortion product is frequency specific used for the early noise induced hearing loss and diagnose and uh, monitor autotoxicity. Photoacoustic imaging is not recordable then the depanometry is done. Thank you.